Welcome to the fourth screen foot uh, screencast. We are going to um, use loops to build up a bunker for um, our characters who hide behind when playing this uh, simple space invader game. And then uh, when the bunker is hit by a bomb dropped by the invaders, we will remove one tile from the bunker. bunker. So we'll be looking at uh, dynamic removal of objects in our game. At this moment, our scenario, we've got the invader, and if we run the scenario, the invader drops some bombs. But nothing else is happening right now. Okay, um, these bombs are a little bit too big, so this gives me a chance to explain that um, each green foot scenario is a folder structure. So if I go back to my green foot, directory. Here I have the scenario I'm working on right now. It's a folder. If I open it, there's uh, all the Java code. And then we've got two subdirectory, one to store the sounds and one to store the images. So what I've done, I've added inside my image subfolder, um, smaller bomb. So it's basically the same bomb. I've just shrunk it. And then I've created a, um, a small square tile just a, uh, a file from your favorite photo editor and you uh, created uh, this one is a 10 by 10 pixel and then just the white color which will clash nicely with the black uh, of my space background so once i've added these files here i can use them immediately in my green foot scenario so first thing i'm going to do right click on the bomb class to set its image to the smaller bomb. Brilliant. Now we can start building our bunker. So I want to build five bunkers, which will be at the bottom of the screen, and then our character will be able to hide underneath the bunkers. To get started, we need to create a new subclass, and I'm going to call it a tile. And then I can pick the, the image for the tile that I've just showed you into this folder. There it is. The next thing to do is to use this tile into our world in order to build the bunkers. So I bring the code for my, um, my world and I'm going to add a new method inside the constructor for my world and that method I'm just going to simply call it build bunker but I now need to of course write this method so the code for this method um, is going to be in a separate um, separate method than the constructor for my world and then the method that greenfoot automatically generates whenever you um, place a new if I show you if I um, I will have to compile this first but then if I uh, I need to compile well this is because of um, this is because I've put the code for build bunker here so if I comment out this code compile the world nope it's worked now if I right click on tile and pick a new tile that I place in my world if I do save the world and bring you back the code for the world what you see inside this prepare method is the code to add the tile into the world but this is not how I want to build my bunker what I can do, I can cut this code and I'm going to reuse it here inside my build bunker method. So to create a new method, first we need to decide whether it's going to be a method that can be accessed from outside the class or not. To do that, we use the private 
keyword. So for example, the prepare method that is that I've just showed you earlier is a private method. It can only be accessed from inside our space world class and the it is accessed by the constructor to the world. The constructor method is public. So every time you create a new world or a new object, you need to call its constructor and that is a public method. Another public method that you know is the act method. My build bunker, I want it to be private. Next, in all method expect except the constructors, we have to state if uh, we um, if the method returns a um, parameter, and if it does, we need to say which type that um, that parameter will be. If we don't want to return any parameter, we use the, key the keyword void. Then the name of our method, and if we want to. Uh, send some parameters to the method we would put them in between brackets right now I don't want to send any parameters so I open and close my brackets with nothing in between and finally I put my curly brackets next I'm going to do auto layout and you can see that now I've got the code, code for my method if I compile this code it's working and if I compile my whole game, we ha still have this one tile that's placed at the same place as before as I did not change the location of the tile. Right, next we're going to use a for loop in order to add more than one tile. So the for loop in between brackets we need to uh, specify how the counter that uh, uh, is used by the for loop is going to be initialized its stopping value and how it's incremented every time we iterate through the loop the for loop is a loop we use when we know exactly how many times we are going to exec execute the code that will be placed inside the loop my counter is going to be a whole number so I need to I need to use the keyword int for integer int and then I can give it a name by convention we use often use i uh, for the standard counter inside for loops and it starts at a value 0 semicolon next I need to uh, specify its stopping value and I want to execute the for loop until the counter reaches the value file. Finally, I'm going to increment the counter by 1 every time and the code for this is um, i++. So when you see plus plus that means adding 1 to uh, the variable that specified just before. Now, curly brackets for the content of my for loop. Here we are. We create a new tile, same code as before, and then we add this tile, but this is where I need to change. These are the x and the y coordinates where the tile is added into the world. And I don't want a my five tiles to be added on top of each other. So in order to move them, I'm going to use the value of my i, which is changed every time we go through the loop. So i, uh, my tile is a 10 pixel by 10 pixel tile. So if I simply do 10 times i, the first time I go through the loop, i will be 0. So the tile will be placed right against the left border of my screen. The next time I will be 1, so I will start at 10 pixel. 10 pixel is just next to the first tile. So I should end up with a, a thin um, rectangle made of my 5 tiles, one against the other. 
let's run this code here it is all right so that's the first row of my bunker to add another row to the bunker i need a second for loop that i'm going to place inside the first one so for open bracket integer again it cannot be i it's got to be a different one so i'm going to call it j same thing starting at zero maximum value for j will be i'm going to stop just before five and j plus plus curly bracket for the code for my target tidy up the code and I'm going to do the same thing 10 times oh, J compile of course now that both I and J starts at 0 the 0 0 point in green foot is the top left corner so this is one bunker the next pace the step is to build five of these and to space them across the bottom of my screen so I'm going to leave the code for my build bunker as it is because it did build one bunker instead in order to build five I'm going to create a for loop inside the space world method so we're becoming used to it for as this is a separate method than the build bunker, I can reuse the same name for my counter than I've used before. So i equals zero, i less than five, i plus plus, curly bracket, curly bracket, clean up the code. But if I run this, I'm going to build five bunkers on top of each other in my top left corner. In order to space my bunkers across the screen, I'm going to pass some parameters to my build bunker method. The parameters I'm going to pass are simply an offset for x and an offset for y. However, if I compile this, I'm going to get an error. going to get an error I do need oh did I forget to close my bracket here yes so sorry this is not the error I was looking for if I compile it this is the error I was looking for I forgot to specify the type for my offset parameters my offsets are whole numbers so they are of type integer now if I compile this I'm going to not get another Right, um, this error is the one I was looking for. It's because I did not uh, specify my offset in the declaration code for my bunker. So in fact, the code I've got here is the code that should go in the declaration of my bunker. And I'm going to use these offsets simply by adding them to the coordinates when I add a time so down here plus offset x and for j plus offset y finally when I call build bunker I need to give it some offsets let's do the easy one first which is the offset for um, the vertical offsets because the bunkers are all going to be lined up um, horizontally. The offsets are all going to be lined up horizontally at the same value. I want them to be towards the bottom of my screen, so I'm going to use 280 pixels. And then for the x value, I want the x value to change every time I build a new bunker. So let's, um, let's do i 
times 100. Let's run this code and see what happens. Excellent, we have our five bunkers, but because our first value for i is zero, the first bunker is built right against the left axis, which is not exactly what we want. So I'm going to add 75 pixel and compile again. Perfect. Okay, we're going to run the game. So right now, we've got our bunker, but the bombs don't destroy any of the tiles. So we need to do the second part of this screencast, which is remove all of objects. In fact, I will do that in a separate screencast and pause this one now.